guys, my name is Kiki Bendilla and I am the founder of the National Self-Reliance Project. We are the producers of the Self-Reliance and Simple Life Experience, formerly the Self-Reliance Expo, and also the developer of the Self-Reliance University, which is essentially the online platform of the Self-Reliance Expo and our, it's the same speakers, great information and resources that you'll find at the Expo. So today I actually have one of our speakers that has been a speaker for us for quite a few years for the Expo, uh, Nick Meacher. He has recently founded Fortune Favors the Prepared, a website that has, uh, he's been able to put together all of his great information that people have been asking for for years. So he's finally taken the plunge and and put that together and launched that website. So I will be providing you the, um, the actual site so you know to go and visit and you can uh, check out some of his great information. But he's also um, a communication specialist. He speaks on emergency communications often at the Expo. He is the founder of the Patriot VE testing team which is licensing, does licensing for ham radio operators. So I'm very excited to have you. Thank you for being here, Nick. Um, and so we have been talking about preparedness. Um, of course, the four pillars of self-reliance are preparedness, survival, sustainability, and homesteading. We're going to be getting to the survival, the sustainability, and the homesteading, but preparedness and survival really go hand in hand. And we are just coming off of September, which is that was National Emergency Preparedness Month. And then we went into October being uh, last week was National Fire, uh, National Fire Prevention Week. And in all of this, uh, we're talking a lot about just individual preparedness and, and sure, it also extends to family and children, but there seems to be a real void for family preparedness. And I know that that's something, uh, Nick, that you've put together a lot of material on. So I'm going to turn it over to you and uh, tell us a little bit about family preparedness and what you have built and what families can, can do to, to get themselves collectively together. So yeah, the, the whole project for, for want of a better term um, started out a long time ago, collecting information and, and doing classes and uh, presentations at expos and things. <clears throat> but the big void that I saw was people focus on typically one or two areas. They look at the food or they look at uh, some other aspect, power, um, whatever that is, but there was nothing pulling that all together. And so what started out and became a, uh, it started out as a book and then along came COVID. And, and so I pushed it to the webpage and uh, that was a big learning curve. But the whole idea was to get the information out because I kept seeing the same kind of questions come up and people were given misinformation. But the big missing piece was this, the planning piece. People forget that. And so, you know, people were, looking at planning and budgeting, what do I need for food or what do I need for this? But they were forgetting the whole family component piece. And so that's what started this project. That's one of the pieces of information that I have is how to put that family plan together. And what I looked around the web and I couldn't find anything that was already out there. If you go to FEMA and there's a, a basic family plan, well, all it is is a collection of, of numbers, uh, phone numbers, basically a telephone call list. And so it morphed and became this rather, rather large project. And the base piece to that plan is, is the personal information piece. So that I created as a form fillable document. And it has all the basic information that you need to collect and you fill it out on this form. Uh, so the headers are there. So it tells you, you know, what information you need to get from personal information. Where does somebody work? Um, obviously the home address, obviously all the different phone numbers, because we're so used to put them in, into our devices. I remember when I was a kid, I could remember, you know, my dad's work number, you know, my family, my friends, you know, everybody's numbers you remembered. 
Uh, we don't do that anymore. I couldn't even tell you what my daughter's phone number is uh, because we rely on pushing the buttons in our devices. And so it has a space to write all that stuff down. Uh, other things like if you have a ham radio license, if you have a GMRS license, put that information in there. So it's all in one place. Uh, schools, school addresses, GPS coordinates, because if you get a hurricane, tornado, uh, street signs, landmarks are gone. Um, uh, doctors, pharmacies, dentists, all those kind of key places, urgent cares that are around you that you might need in an emergency. All that information goes into one place. And then uh, another component to that is the communications piece. So you've collected all those numbers, but there's a lots of other pieces to that. So the plan kind of revolves around what we see in emergency management. You have a base plan and then you have annexes. So one of those annexes is uh, the communications plan. That goes through steps to collect things like uh, what's the National Weather Service frequencies, the NOAA frequencies that the, the weather stuff comes out on for your county. What's the same code? So the same codes are specific codes that when they do an alert for tornado or uh, severe weather, it's county specific, typically county specific. Each county has a code. So it's embedded into the signal. So if you have a weather alert radio, it alerts your radio. It can be quiet until that tone goes off. So collecting that information so that you can program that into your weather radios. Uh, what's the primary uh, radio stations in your area, AM and FM? Um, you know, collect that information as well as all the ham radio stuff, the FRS frequencies, GMRS frequencies. So that's the part I'm building right now and it will be built into a fillable spreadsheet. So some of the information will be dropped down. So you can drop that information down into a spreadsheet. You can then export into CSV format, which a lot of the radio programming software will accept. Now you have all the numbers so you don't have to go manually type stuff in. Now there are some things you're gonna to have to look up for your local area, um, but most of the generic stuff will be built into that. Uh, another piece that most people forget is uh, what I call a contingency binder or a contingency plan. And that is a collection of all your important documents. So that could be um, copies or photographs or scans of driver's license, passports, birth certificates, social security cards, um, your will, uh, insurance documents, bank information, all that kind of stuff so that you have all that in a central place. Now, it could be you put all that information on a USB and you can get some encrypted ones uh, so it's password protected and you keep that with your emergency bag or if you have several adults in your family, each person has a copy. Um, so that has all that information in it. It can also have obviously a copy of your family, the basic family plan as well. Um, other things are like triggers. So a trigger is an event. So something happens, for example, the best ones to use are weather events. So you get a tornado, war uh, tornado warning, or sorry, a tornado watch. So that you should do certain things for. It's just like a hurricane. You're five days out, it might be coming your way. There are certain actions that you should be taking. You make sure everybody's phones are charged and devices are charged. You make sure everybody's aware of where you're gonna meet if you're not at home, how you're gonna communicate. Um, are you gonna use an app like one of the push to talk apps on that you can get for your smartphone? If that doesn't work, what's your next plan that you go to? Um, and so I call that preparedness conditions, PrepCon because you see that with all emergency management and everybody's aware if you've ever watched war games or any of those movies, they have death con, defense condition. So this all started as a joke at work and uh, they started calling it um, meach con for my conditions. Uh, and then I just changed it to prep con. Um, so I have that as a chart with some basic information and in to start with. So if you start to see rolling power outages, if you're in California, you know there's rolling power outages, what are you going to do to make sure that you're prepared in case one of those happens, like having charged batteries, flashlights, lanterns, things like that. Um, and, and there's other larger events on there too. If you see a uh, large solar flare coming, you know, you might wanna protect some of your electronics and there's other bigger events on there, but you can make it specific to your area. So if you're in hurricane area or tornado area, uh, winter storms, you know, the winter storms come in, you know, a couple of days out, 
what are things you're going to do? Like make sure you got a full tank of gas and make sure you got the right supplies in your vehicle, winter gear, coats, um, you know, um, uh, cat litter for, you know, getting out of slippery situations, things like that. Um, let's see, I'm trying to remember the other ones off the top of my head because I don't have the mind map in front of me. Um, so, there, so there's different components. Oh, uh, an area of assessment. So an area assessment is what things are your, it, do you have around you that might be hazardous? So do you have uh, bulk storage facilities, hazardous materials facilities, petroleum plants, things like that that could be hazardous and you might have to get up and get out pretty quickly? Uh, do you live on the um, urban wildland interface area where you're close to wildfires? As we're seeing in, in Colorado right now, California, um, you know, if you're in those areas, then part of your planning is, you know, you know and decide when you're going to get out and leave, which is should be far earlier than they issue mandatory evacuations. Um, have, have an emergency checklist or emergency evacuation near the door that everybody has one. It's got their basic stuff in it, but you have other things around your house that you might need or might want to grab. So you create that priority list so that if you have to go and they say you got five minutes, what are you going to grab to get out of your house? So you've thought all this through ahead of time. You can play it as a game, you know, one night so that you're not trying to do it. When somebody bangs on the door and says, you've got five minutes to get out before the wildland fire gets here and you're not going to be able to get out. So that's a, a priority list of things you want to grab pictures or things like that, which, you know, um, some of that you should have already scanned, but it might be other things that you have that you'd like to take. Um, so that's all part of the whole family planning piece um, that you need to put together so that you have an idea of, and you're not trying to do this at the last minute because you know we all think very clearly when we're suddenly put under pressure. So having that written down, here we go, this is what I need to do. And then having everybody aware of that. So it's pretty comprehensive. It does take work to do, but once you've done it, you know, you periodically check it, but that's all part of this whole planning piece that I think a lot of people tend to forget. You know, yeah. you got three months of food, but what's your plan? Right. Yeah. And, and I think you get into the, you know, I know you speak on emergency communications and I mean, your mind map is fantastic and it is something that um, as different, you know, we, we've been dealing with so many threats here in 2020, uh, you know, with hurricanes and fires and, uh, you know, uh, COVID and riots and whatever. Um, and I know for me, my mind goes blank. I have all the information. I know what I need to do. I have my go bag. I've done all of those things. But if I have to do it in a rush and on the fly and I'm trying to get out of the house or trying to get to my family members, um, to be able to have a plan and a checklist and to just be able to go right through it and get everything I need is super, super valuable. So um, it's, this, is, this is awesome. So how long would you say that this would take for someone to sit down and really get through the bulk of it? Oof. Um, I would say probably you need to plan on investing maybe 20 hours uh, to do all of it. Things like, because some things are a little more difficult, like collecting a map. Um, it's hard to find maps of your area now, you know, unless you go hunting for them. So that takes a little bit of effort. Um, a lot of the research you can, you can do online, figuring out where, you know, your local pharmacies, urgent care, things like that are, map that. Um, a lot of, it might take less, depends on how thorough you want to be. The area assessment takes time because that you're going to have to research, uh, you know, what's around your area, what could be a hazard, how close are you to highways, you know, what kind of, you know, methyl ethyl bad stuff goes along a highway all the time, you know, and, and some of that, so some of it can take longer, but the basic piece shouldn't take you more than an hour to just collate all the information, um, that part of it, um, you know getting your ham radio license, getting everybody in your family to have one is, is takes longer. Obviously that's a separate, it's a component, it's a separate piece that's gonna take you longer to do. Oh, that's awesome. So 
The mind maps and all of this is on your new site, fortunefavorsetheprepared.com. <laughs> and is there a cost to doing that? So yeah, so I did it as a subscriber program. So it's eleven ninety five a month. Uh, then you have access to everything. But if you want copies of the mind maps, uh, some of them I've already got printed. You can order those, uh, or I can print them to order uh, different sizes that you want. There's a big one behind me right here. That's the that's the master preparedness one. So that's kind of like the big picture stuff. But the article, you know, the blog has some of the smaller ones in and I can get those printed any, pretty much any size you want. Um, so pretty much print on demand and it usually then takes me a day or two to turn them around. So it's all there. Um, like I said, I did it as a subscription rather than trying to go around the book route because there's information that just, it usually it starts out as a conversation with somebody says, hey, what about this? or something I see on a post and they ask questions and it ends up, okay, you know, there's other people ask the same thing. So I end up writing an article. I just finished one the other day that kind of morphed into a lot larger article than I was anticipating on, on uh, operation security, which is basically how easy it is for somebody to find out everything about you. Um, and it was, as I researched that, it became kind of scary. But I also found ways to reduce the amount of your information that's out there. So it has those tips and tricks in it too to um, limit the amount of exposure that you have on the on the great inter internet. This is awesome, awesome, um, and Nick and I hope that people understand that this is like you coming into people's homes and being a private consultant, an individual consultant to help them put together their preparedness plan. You yourself are um, a prepper, if you will, and you have your plan. And I know that so many people call you, pick up the phone, say, what should I do with this? How are you doing this? And um, I mean, I hope that people understand the value of what you have put together and what you have built, because this is, I know, a culmination of years of work, um, both in your personal and professional life. And I would challenge anyone to be able to deliver the same quality of information for, you know, this for the same price, a subscription price is incredible. And, you know, everybody it's 20 hours sounds like a lot until you start to get into it. And how often would you suggest that people need to up update this information um so I, I think i wrote in the blog you know when you have kind of life-changing or uh, events so you know start of the school year obviously kids got new school new new teachers new information that's always a good one um weather seasons so if like hurricane season tornado season you know that's when you should get it out check it make sure everything's still current so there's kind of big things going into winter season if you're in an area that has severe winter weather um, that should coincide with you know perhaps changing the contents of your your bag you keep in your car to winter stuff uh, maybe putting some winter stuff in your car like extra blankets and shovels and stuff like that so when you kind of have those major uh, changes is, is always a good time. It shouldn't be something that, and that's, I think, a big problem that people have with, and even emergency managers have, you know, we write a plan and, you know, there it sits on the shelf gathering dust until, you know, something happens and somebody says, hey, did you follow the plan? And you go, hmm, what plan? Oh, that plan. And you go, oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you need to get in the habit of checking stuff all the time. You know, part yeah. of that list of information should be your kids' friends. You know, hey, I'm going over to so-and-so's house. Okay, well, where do they live? You know, you as a parent should know that, you know, know their phone numbers and and stuff like that. That should be part of that information that you have. Um, so any kind of big life-changing thing, any kind of big seasonal thing uh, that's going on is, is always a good time to just dust it off and check. And, hey, everybody up to speed with this, spend a, have a pizza night around the table and go, okay, is this all good information? Is everybody remember this and things like that? Yeah, I, I listen, I think that this is fantastic. And then when it's done, it's done. It's amazing for the kids to be able to have something like this, to know that they can refer to it. If 
something happens to mom and dad and they need to know what, what actions do they need to take. Um, just earlier today, on top of that, I was talking to someone about winterizing their car and I sort of scratched my head and I thought, that's probably a good idea being in Colorado, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, is winterizing your car. And uh, so there are so, I mean, everything that you're talking about is so comprehensive. Uh, the whole thing about trying to find out about yourself on the internet, that's very that's scary. scary. Uh, yeah, I don't even know if I want to go down that road, but that is really, really important. So um, thank you for putting this together. I know that there's been a big demand for it. I know that uh, folks in our audience were like, how do I get those mind maps? Well, now they're finally available. And um, I'm, I'm pretty excited, Nick. I will definitely get you know, uh, do it myself. Because even if you have a plan in some of the areas, it sounds like there's other areas that you may not have even thought about, like mm -hmm. finding out about who you are on the internet. Um, and that is, like I say, I, it's curious, but I think once you, that curiosity can also sort of freak you out. So um, yeah. <laughs> we'll see yeah, what it, yeah. about. But, but there are ways to, to control that once you realize, you know, what's out there. Um, yeah. this is, and, and that's, you know, this day and age is important, especially if you've got kids. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Nick. This is fantastic. So you guys, um, I will be posting, um, there's a blog on our website, selfrelianceuniversity.com forward slash blog. You will find Nick's, uh, blog post there and also all of his information so you can sit down with the family. And I mean, this is, this is super cool. And uh, it's a great culmination as we move off of the preparedness uh, piece, if you will, and we start getting more into uh, some of the homesteading going into the holidays. I think that this is a great, uh, this is a great bookend to, to that. So thank you very much. And uh, we will see you at fortunefavorsthepreparedcom Thank you, guys.